Thank you for having me and congratulations for being at this conference in a bear market. A lot of people are missing from uh, the last conference I was at here. Um, so this company, Bit.com, we started it in 2013. Uh, my co-founder and I saw the power and the potential of blockchain technology and set out on a mission to bring Bitcoin to the Caribbean, set out on a mission to empower people. And it's been a long journey. It's been a fascinating journey. We've learned a lot and we have a really important mission set out before us. Is my clicker working? My clicker doesn't seem to be working though. Okay, so I'll take, if we could get the clicker working, that'd be great. If not, I'll just talk about the presentation. Um, okay, so BIT began as a mission to create a Bitcoin exchange, a digital asset exchange, and coming from Barbados, which is where we set up shop, we immediately began running into problems. The first problem we had is capital controls in Barbados an inability to move money freely in and out of the island. And so Bitcoin doesn't face that problem, but we ran into our second challenge. The second challenge was if we have a market for people to buy Bitcoin, how are we going to purchase Bitcoin with Barbadian dollars? And so there was this two problems in fact. One was the education component. Every conversation began with you know, we're trying to explain the power of blockchain technology and the conversation begins with what is Bitcoin? And if anyone has heard of Bitcoin, they're affiliating it with Silk Road, with Mt. Gox and uh, money laundering, which is something that the Caribbean is highly stigmatized for. So the first problem is the education side. The second problem was the supply side of the equation. And so our exchange vision expanded Well, it's still not working. <laughs> um, our exchange vision expanded to include a mobile wallet. The idea being that if we can transform the Caribbean and solve a remittance problem where people are paying 8 to 13% to bring money into the Caribbean, and we can use Bitcoin to do so, aha, we will find ourselves in a position where we have a supply. So. Let me get back on track. We're talking about our objective. So <laughs> I'm not in charge of these slides anymore, apparently. Okay. So our <laughs> what the objective of BIT now, you know, so I'm taking you through the journey of trying to build a cryptocurrency exchange in a small developing state and running into problems, education problems, problems of supply, and how effectively can we stimulate a liquid economy? And you know, I'll finish what I started. Running through that, we decided let's do a mobile app and let's create inbound remittance to the Caribbean. And when we began to do that, we ran into problems. And those problems kind of, I'll take you through the journey, but they range from central bank, uh, correspondent bank, de-risking where we lost our accounts to an inability to access e-commerce, to lack of regulatory understanding, to volatility of cryptocurrencies as a form of remittance or payment. And as we went through each layer of the money supply, encountering problems, we sat down, thought, debated on what type of solutions we could come up with, and ultimately a re-architecture of the existing financial system is necessary. In the Caribbean, it's necessary, and it's our firm belief that, in fact, I think every one of us is here to some extent because we recognize that the current financial system, capital markets, financial markets are broken, and we recognize that distributing trust and consensus amongst the group is a better mechanism for managing almost every transaction that we do in society.
And so our mission at BID is to promote financial inclusion through the M Money ecosystem. We want to financially empower everyone to be able to have access. We're 60% of people within the Caribbean, and this trend is replicated in developing uh, nations, do not have access to a bank account or are underbanked. We want to provide central banks with the infrastructure to issue a secure digital fiat currency, which is a big, that's, our, that's a big mission, and we've been tackling this now for four years. And we want to create a global settlement network for high-speed interbank transactions. We want to allow central banks to first issue a digital fiat currency on their own ledger, and then we want to enable those central banks to engage in global trade using their own technology. So can we move to the next slide, please? So when we set up the asset exchange, it was the introduction to bit.com, and our objectives were allow consumers to use a matching engine to effectively buy an asset class that we invested into and believed that uh, would be you know, considerably more valuable than it was at the time, and that hypothesis has panned out. And many people who were able to access cryptocurrencies through bit.com uh, have transformed their lives. However, we had many problems. I mentioned the education and awareness. Um, encouraging digital adoption was difficult because even though the interfaces seem to be uh, intuitive, they really are not if you're looking at the average man and woman and the level of sophistication that they can uh, handle in terms of an application interface. Um, so education was poor, digital adoption was poor, and there was no conduit for people to move their money in and out. Um, banking was difficult. Bank accounts were difficult to get and harder to keep. So can we move to the next slide, please? So we then created what was the first mobile wallet in the Caribbean. The vision was to enable people to send and receive Bitcoin and Litecoin between one another uh, and to buy and sell using our exchange engine on the back end. And again, we encountered problems. The primary one was fiat onboarding. The Caribbean has a reputation for, um, not justly, for money laundering, for tax evasion, and generally what I refer to as neo-colonialism, uh, where the payment infrastructure is leveraged against the people and we now have a state where up to 40 percent of banks in the Caribbean have lost their correspondent banking relationships and in some cases in countries like Belize that means an entire uh, a complete embargo against accessing the US payment system and you know this is it's called de-risking because the idea is that the risk is too high and they have to re-risk you but how that has panned out and how it panned out for BIT was we lost our bank accounts entirely. So we moved the entire business to cash management. And in fact, we have been running BIT.com, our mobile wallet and exchange business in an entirely cash-based ecosystem domestically in Barbados, which is something of an engineering feat because what it means is that even in the absence of banking, we can operate this mobile money ecosystem. So if we move to the next slide, the, you know, the idea was we need to, so how are we going to create this demand for sort of inter-regional and international trade? What are we going to do? And one of the major challenges that was difficult to find a solution to was the volatility of Bitcoin. And so, we were aware of the Colored Coins protocol and the Omni protocol, which are built on Bitcoin, and thought it would be a brilliant idea to tokenize the dollar. And when we did that in 2016, uh, it got the attention of Overstock.com and Dr. Patrick Byrne, who shared our vision and mission for transforming the existing financial architecture and bringing distributed ledger technology to people to financially empower them. 
and Overstock invested into our Series A round and backed by a Barbadian digital dollar. So this digital dollar was the first time a central bank had overseen the creation of a fiat token on a distributed ledger. So that was, thank you. So for us, that was a crystallizing moment in our mission. It became less about operating a digital asset exchange, less about the cryptocurrency integrations, which were still important, still are important um, because of their characteristics and the fact that they're censorship resistant um, and have these properties such as scarcity and immutability that you know, we really believe long term are hugely important. But the digital dollar became the focus. Let us empower central banks. Let us re-architect the existing financial infrastructure. Let's bring immutability, accountability, auditability to the money that is issued by our government. And let's redress the balance of power between people and governments and bring more accountability to our financial system. So what shortfalls did we have? We spoke at United Nations, we spoke at World Bank, we spoke at the Caribbean Development Bank. We've spoken almost at every major platform that one can. And we still face this problem today. All of us face the problem of lacking legislation and legal frameworks. Um, in Barbados and the Caribbean, we had created this digital dollar, but no one could spend it. And so, we, if you move to the next slide, we began building a mobile money ecosystem, which to my knowledge is the first complete mobile money blockchain driven uh, payment system globally. I don't know of anyone else who has a complete ecosystem. And what I mean by a complete ecosystem is in the absence of banking, you can download a free to use merchant wallet, a free to use mobile wallet, you can do your compliance and verification using biometrics and check in the sanctions list and all of the necessary checks and balances for a licensed financial institution. And the merchant themselves can become the cash in and cash out point. So, you know, Abra has a one, Bill has a, a wonderful vision of making a human teller. We thought that function might be better applied to a merchant because they can manage cash and they're equipped to handle the risk of larger volumes of cash. And so we launched M Money at the beginning of this year in Barbados. We have thousands and thousands of users in a very small island and hundreds upon hundreds of merchants. And the most important part about this network is that we're seeing it grow and being adopted. So this is, if you're looking at the bottom, if we move to the next slide, if we're thinking about the financial infrastructure, we have our blockchain or distributed ledger at the base layer of the protocol, and then you build a standard for a digital dollar on top of that. So our mission is to create standard reference implementations to issue digital dollars, whether it's on Bitcoin, Ethereum, Hyperledger. We want to create standards to allow central banks to issue their own fiat currency. At the top, we have our central banking layer, which is where money is created, where you have to go through the checks and balances, have real-time audits, and be able to manage an economy effectively. At the second layer, you have financial institutions. So the financial institutions, as partners of BIT, can deploy their own M money ecosystem, can deploy their own compliance tools, and issue or manage a fiat currency instrument which is issued by a central bank and at the base of the pyramid, the most important layer is where M money operates. This is where you have your merchants and your users. And this is what BIT is deploying in the absence of layers two and one in Barbados. However, this year as well, beginning of this year, we signed on the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank in a pilot project to issue a digital fiat currency in collaboration with the government of Montserrat. So that's the second world first. We are the first company to partner with a central bank and one of four monetary unions globally 
to issue a digital fiat currency into production. It's not a, it's not a closed door test pilot with test data. We are deploying the M-Money ecosystem in Montserrat and then Antigua, Dominica, St. Lucia, throughout the rest of the Union, which is a group of islands and allowing these islands to engage in trade, eliminating the problems of cash management, eliminating the problems of anonymous cash, and generally bringing greater efficiency to this part of the Caribbean. And we're in discussions and consulting with half a dozen other central banks globally. So if we go to the next stage, the next slide, we're at generation five for bit right now. And this is, this is sort of, there's one stage after this, but this phase is absolutely critical. This is where in working with the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank and other central banks, we are designing and specifying a platform that allows for real-time audit. It allows for the integration with multiple protocols and the issuance of digital dollars on interoperable standards by central banks. So we're not asking a sovereign nation to choose Bitcoin. We're telling each central bank and government, choose your ledger, operate with whatever standard it is you wish to, and we will support it. We will make sure in the same way that De La Rue, De La Rue make sure that they have new notes and coins issued when the old no notes are defunct or obsolete, or there's better technology in terms of printing and enforcing the um, unforgeable, unforgeable nature of cash. We're providing these type of services as well. And so BIT's role in the ecosystem is to help in re-architecting the financial system as we know it, and to act as a bridge between the wonderful blockchain protocols that many of us are familiar with and to allow basically the transformation of our economies moving from uh, unaccountable, expensive, difficult to manage legacy systems towards distributed, interoperable, secure and low cost digital fiat currency systems. So thank you very much everyone. Oliver Gale. Have a great conference.